financial forecast uh, by Joe Swetke. Joe, I'll hand it to you. Uh, thank you, CJ. Okay. Um, Kathy asked me to update the financial forecast based on what's happened in the past year. So when it went out and did it, and as you know, this forecast uh, was actually given to you a year ago, just slightly more than a year ago. And just some reminders about the forecast. It's based on historical experience that we use to generate you know, our future assumptions. Um, there's a lot of variables in any forecast that can be impacted by any number of um, things, you know, local policymakers, state and national policymakers, and, and as we learned this past year, world events all can impact a, a forecast and especially a financial forecast. What you have in front of you on the screen is, um, it should look very, some, very familiar to everybody who's on the council. This is the tax and budget worksheet format that we use in our budget documents and that you use during your, your council deliberations, especially on the last day when you say, when you, um, when you set the budget. Just to uh, go over some of the columns, the first column is the FY 2021 actual budget. That's the budget we're living in right now. This is the budget that you adopted uh, last May of 2020. And as it shows, it has an increase, overall increase, well, it doesn't show here, but this budget had an overall increase on the expenditure side of 0.35% and had a zero tax increase, thanks to a significant reduction in capital appropriations from the previous year. The next column is the FY21-22 is the project, uh, projected budget. And, and this is a, a combination of, of amounts. Some are projected and some are actual. actual. Um, a lot of what you see in that column, you're gonna actually see it in less than a month when Kathy uh, Egan presents her, or Kathy Blonsky, I'm sorry, presents her recommended budget um, to you on, on March 9th. Um, a lot of those numbers you'll, you'll see again at that time. The remaining uh, columns, FY22 slash 23 to 28, 29, are, are the financial forecast, and they're based on following assumptions. The first assumption is that the board and town budgets will increase about 3% per, per year. This goes back historically, looking at averages and, and seeing that on, on, as a rule, roughly there's a roughly 3% increase per year amongst those two components. The debt service numbers are, um, includes existing debt, all the debt we've issued up through this point in time, plus any future debt issues that, were, that are planned based on the current adopted capital budget. So in other words, we looked at the capital budget that you adopted last year, looked at what was bonding, what, what it included for bonding going out for the next seven years and incorporated that into the debt service numbers, the debt service line. So when you see that, that line there, it, again, it's the existing debt, which is any debt issued up through this um, right now, plus any debt based on what would be issued in the capital budget. The future debt issues include things for roads, fire apparatus, uh, fire facility renovations, and school renovations. This, this category, as you go across, and we'll look at the numbers closely in a minute, um, it, proje it projects that debt service will hover about around $8 million per year through 28-29, again, based on existing debt, based on the cap uh, adopted capital budget. And the capital improvements line, which is the next line down in the appropriations expenditure section, that is the 3%, um, what that equates to is 3% of the total, of the sum total of the education, town, BOE pensions, and, and debt service line. So in other words, if you, if you total up those lines in any given year, they will, the capital improvements line will equal 3% of the, of the total of those four lines. Dropping down the grandless numbers, the grandless numbers for 2021 and 2122 are actual numbers. The, obviously, the 2021 is the grandless that we used for the adopted budget, and the 2122 grandless numbers are the numbers that were released last uh, last week by the by the assessor for the 20 grandless, the October uh, October 1, 19, uh, 2020 grandless. Going forward, what we did is we updated the grandless numbers and their forecast and the projections. So there's been some slight increases there based on the past two years where we had good uh, grandless experience. We brought that forward into the future years to the next seven years out. 
I should note also in these years that there's there are two years where we built in a revaluation. Um, year 23, 24, and in, in the very last year, 28, 29. So when you when we get down further to the tax and mill rate calculation, you'll see some different numbers, but that's because the um, not only was the tax rate impacted by the expenditures and the revenues, but they were also impacted by what we think reval would do in those years. And then the revenue categories, um, those are just the non-tax revenues that we budget for each year. For the most part, we use a 10-year forecast on those, unless we know something is happening uh, going forward. We try to, um, those are really cyclical. They're, they're very um, economic driven, other than, well, even state grants are to an extent, but most of them are really cyclical. They're, they're, they're really economic driven. The economy, the economy affects them um, quite a bit. Sometimes good, sometimes bad. Excuse me. I'm going to jump back up to the um, hundred, the line that's highlighted in yellow under expenditures, $110 million bond issue. Yeah, this is the projected bonding for the new high school project. It's based on the direction that the town council gave to the high school building committee last year for their maximum municipal effort or municipal amount. The timing of the issue is based on a draft schedule prepared by the architect for how the project would uh, proceed if, it, if successful at referendum. So they basically said, you know, this is what we, how we think things will fall. This is when uh, certain things will happen. The uh, timing of the bonds is based on the schedule. The, ske the bond issue schedule assumes a successful uh, referendum sometime in either late spring or early summer of this year. Start of design work by the architect immediately after that. In other words, they would just once the approval was get, gained that referendum design work would start and that construction on the project would begin about around September of 2020, 20, I'm sorry, 2022. It would end during the summer of 2025. So you have a, a three year, three or four year time frame there. So you're starting, uh, you'd actually break ground, award contract break ground in the fall of 2022 and in the summer of 2025. Based on the schedule, we looked at uh, cash flow needs. And we figured that the best scenario right, as of right now, based on the schedule would be four bond issues. So, um, and then we thought that the best way to show these bond issues, and obviously there are a lot of variables, but the best way we thought to show these bond issues was to have them all take place at the same time each year, just for comparisons pur purposes. So for this forecast, we did the bond issues in January of each year. However, the timing of the bond, of the actual issues and the amount of each issue may vary depending upon the timing of the project, cash flow needs and market conditions. But again, we needed a basis for where to start. So we used January of each year. Based on those assumptions, in January of 2022, we would do a $20 million bond issue. In January of 2023, we would do a $45 million bond issue. In January of 2024, we would do a $25 million bond issue. In January of 2025, we would do a $20 million bond issue. And because the first bond issue is projected for January of 2022, there's no debt service impact or tax impact in 21-22. So if you look down the bottom below, you, you'll see that there's no impact, there's no debt service um, for, the, for the, any issue in 21-22. The first impact would be for that, um, for that first issue, that $20 million issue would hit in 22-23. And that 22-23 debt service, the, the, the debt service we forecast would be about $1.2 million. However, if you look right above it, debt service for existing debt and projected debt actually drops off $1.1 million in that year. So because of that, the impact on the tax rate is only $77. The, um, in, the increase to the tax rate is, is basically seventy seven dollars, um, so it's, it's a lower it's a low increase that year because you're you're taking advantage of some debt dropping off, some older debt dropping off. The increase in um, twenty three twenty four, it the increase in the taxes in twenty three twenty four due to the high school debt service is about one hundred and eighty nine dollars. Just give you an idea, this is we're talking about an average house assessed house right now. An average assessed house is 
just slightly below $227,000. So, and that's, again, that's the assessment, not the market value of the house. In 24-25, debt service payments would increase by $1.7 million and the tax increase would be $98, a um, little over $98. 24-25, that would increase, debt service for the high school would increase another $1.7 million. It'd be an increase of $94.26. In 20, uh, 20, FY 26-27, the debt service for the project almost reaches its peak at about $7.9 million per year. The increase, the tax increase as a result of the increase in the debt service would be about $9. So you're pretty much peaking out at that point. You're starting to, um, and it, its impact on taxes starts to drop off dramatically. And then 20, uh, after 26, 27, that service peaks out and you begin to see a decrease as the interest cost decreases until all debt is finally paid off in 20, uh, 2045. And the, peak in, with the peak in debt service after 26, 27, it, it would no longer contribute to any tax increases going forward. Um, it's pretty much what the forecast looks like. It's, it's, you know, the yellow line down below does show that what the increases would be due to the, due to the increase in debt service. You do see that there are tax increases every year built, you know, in, in the forecast based on the various assumptions that we made. And then, um, you know, but of that, of those increases, uh, the portion that, is related to the high school um, project is, is just, it's a portion of it. It's not, you know, in some cases, it's not even the, the overall writing driving factor for that year. Um, I'd be glad to take any questions. CJ, could I just add one thing? It's uh, Kathy Wonski. Yes. I can't figure out how to raise my hand. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, anybody who can't raise their hand, just do it manually. Sorry, Sorry. Um, I just wanted to make sure, and Joe mentioned it, but just to be clear, is that on the capital improvements going outward and all the, that we are putting in the Friar report um, and all the existing debt. That's one thing that I think people had asked about quite a bit last time around to make sure that all the other things on the capital plan are incorporated into this um, forecast. So anything that is in the capital plan, our roads, and you know we have a potential firehouse project. There's the Friar plan for all the element, all the existing schools. That is all incorporated into that plan. Joe did mention it, but I just wanted to say it again because I know that that was a very important topic to people. So that is in this forecast. Right. Just just to follow up on that, um, on the Friar report, two point two million dollars of bonding. Um, authorization is included in the capital budget or in the debt service amounts, um, the existing debt service amounts going forward. So there is, you know, there was a factor in there for, for the Friar report and for the other schools. It just, you know, they weren't forced out of this project. Great. Thank you, Joe. I will now take questions from the council. Ed, first hand up. Go ahead. Thank you, CJ. And uh, thank you, Joe, for the presentation. Very much appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> my question is, um, so right now I know that, um, you know, interest rates are near historic lows. Um, so I'm wondering, can you tell us what are the assumptions on that $110 million bond issue? What's the yield you're assuming? And is that a 20 year maturity? Um, all of the issues are, are 20 year maturities. Okay. Um, I, again, wanted to keep it apples to apples, so I kept it at 20 years uh, for all, all the maturities. The interest rate assumptions vary. Um, right now, interest rates are, are very low um, for you know, municipal debt, and it's very, very favorable. Uh, but what we're actually seeing is um, rates, um, instead of taking, instead of actually offering rates in the marketplace now, what lower rates in the marketplace, What's happening in, in a lot of instances is you're getting a 2% or a 3% uh, rate, but you're also getting a premium. In other words, the, the buyers of your bonds are giving you money back as opposed to giving you a low interest rate. And because they give you money back, it, it drives it, the true interest rate or the net interest rate actually is a low interest rate. But when you're paying the bonds over the life of the, over the course of the 20 years or the 25 years, whatever you choose, 
the interest rate per year could vary anywhere from 2% to, to 5%. So it, what key is key now is the lack, you know, because they're giving you that money back, they're assuming that you're going to use that money to pay your interest cost over the life of the bonds. So, so that, uh, that money that they're giving back, is that annually or is that? No, they give it back to you in one lump sum. In one lump sum at the maturity date or at what, at, what point? At the, t at, the, at the close. At the close, okay. At close. So, right. so to give you an example, um, and, and I factored some of that into, into these forecasts. Actually, to answer your question, the overall assumption for interest rate was 2.75%. That was the average that we netted it or averaged it out each year at 2.75, which is a little high for the market right now. But again, also to offset that, I did use um, some factor for a premium. In other words, a, a give back of money from the bond buyers. So in some cases, on some of these issues, we've used up to 5% of the actual issue would be given back to us. So in some cases, like on a $40 million issue, you're gonna get back like, you know, um, you're gonna get back over $2 million. They're gonna, at, at closing, they'll give you back the $2 million. And I mean, I did factor that into these, these debt service numbers. So it, it again, you're, you're, I've amortized it at 2.75%, but then I offset it with, with the money that uh, assumed that we would get back through, through a premium. So gotcha. that in most cases, the net interest cost would probably be closer to, the, in, on these issues right here, your net interest cost is probably closer to 2.15, 2.18%. Okay, thanks, Joe. And uh, one more uh, follow-up question there uh, on interest rates. Um, uh, so you said 2.75 is the average, uh, and you said the current rates are a little bit lower. Uh, given that rates are so low right now, is there are there any other bonds that the town currently has that we can refinance at these lower rates and take advantage of those savings right now? Um, unfortunately, there is not. We've um, we're there's nothing that would give us what you want is you want at least two percent savings. You, in other words, if you have a four percent bond, you want to be able to get a two percent bond when you refinance it. That type that's simplistically. Um, and we don't have anything that really qualifies. The only thing that we did have that qualified um, is our is some debt that we cannot um, refinance. The state, it's we have a clean water fund loan with the state of Connecticut, and we looked at the possibility of refinancing that. And the state will not let us refinance that because that will um, it'll complicate their their debt program and their debt. So they've asked us not to refinance it, or they've asked us to get to get permission from them before we refinance it. Um, so we've, we've, we've not done that. But the other thing too is in some cases our debt is low and, and what we're seeing is um, some, some, is, some debt is actually trending up a little bit so that we, it's not favorable to refinance. Um, the U.S. Treasury is actually up over 1%. Um, you know, when we issued, the last time we issued in September, the Treasury was around 0.7. Now it's up around one, what, one point, I think yesterday was, or last Friday was 1.13 or something like that. So um, the spreads are tightening a little bit for, for refinancing at this point, unfortunately. Gotcha. And, and since uh, rates are look like they'll kind of creep up going into the future, it would probably make sense that, a, you know, a, a project like the high school project that we try and get that to, to referendum and try and um, get to that stage where, where we can uh, issue the bonds and take advantage of, of the rates while they're still low, right? Yeah, it would, it would you know, yeah, you probably, you know, it's the time to, to buy, it's, it is the time to issue debt. Um, mm -hmm. And rates, you know, eventually will start to creep up. I mean, if you look at the forecast, again, as I said before, you know, a lot of what we do in this forecasting is impacted by national events, you know, world events, and, and, and even what you, your, you know, your policymakers, what you do. So what you decide to do. So, um, you know, a lot of forecasts now are that inflation will start to creep in, rates might start to creep up. Um, although the Fed says they're still going to keep rates low, which, you know, helps us. So um, it is a good time to issue debt right now. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate it. Great. Thank you. Uh, next question. I'm looking for hands up. Otherwise, I'm going to go right down the line if I don't see hands up. Okay, Peter. Um, Joe, just a quick question. Maybe you know this. How many, do you know, how many houses we have or households 
that are assessed at this two hundred and twenty seven thousand dollar value in town. Do we do we have hard numbers on how the breakup of assessments are in town? Peter, I did at, when we did the last reval I did, I don't have it in front of me, um, but the last time we did the reval in 2017, we actually did a breakdown as to how many houses were, in, we did them in broad ranges, you know, this, this, this amount to this amount. Um, yeah. And in 227, it came out to be the, um, you know, it came out to be the, the, we didn't, we didn't do it as like a mean, we did it more like uh, in ranges and, and the, the largest number of houses were, were in this range. So, um, and, and you know, and what throws this sometimes too is because it probably sounds low to, to some people. Again, just to remind you, it's, it's seventy percent of market value. Um, yeah, I know. But also, yep. but also, you have to remember that there are, you know, when you talk about residential, you're, you're also talking condos. Um, you're also talking, you know, you're, you're talking about some some buildings that may not be as, you know. They're, they're, they're going to be small I mean, that are that are lumped in there that drive the number down a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Good point. I, I didn't think of that. Um, the condo part of it or other types of residents. Okay. Thanks, Joe. Thank you, Peter. Uh, next question. Seeing any hands up there. There you go, Brian. Brian. Right. Yeah. Hey, Joe. Brian, we lost you, Brian. We can't hear you. You're back on mute. I think my paper just put me up. So anyway, I just wanted to say thank you for this, uh, Joe. And you're bringing back a lot of fine memories from last year. And the question I had, and I, I think I brought up last year, was uh, the impact that the town will feel from the 20-year um, debt service. Is it possible to push it out longer? I know that the town pays more over a longer time, but the impact on taxes is less. Have we, uh, are, is that something that we might still want to consider to keep the impact on debt lower, although it will be longer over time? And I think affect more people at the end when their kids will be in school. Is that something that we can discuss or consider? Yes, when, when, when it comes time to issue debt, and we look at, as, as I mentioned before, when it comes time to issue debt, we'll, we're gonna, you know, we'll look at a lot of different variables and a lot of different factors, um, you know, what the cash flow needs are, what, what point of the year are we in, you know, what's the, what's the financial condition of the town at that point, um, what's the economic condition you know, overall, the national economic condition, the local economy, the state economy. We have to look at all of that, um, we, you know, and then we decide how to structure the debt, whether we want to go longer or shorter, um, you know, what, how much we want to issue, whether we want to do a, a principal skip, what, you know, whatever we can do to take advantage of keeping the, you know, to smooth out the debt, to um, smooth out the tax impact on people. Even the reval, you know, look at, you look at, we're going to issue $40 million or $45 million at the same time we're going into a reval. You know, we might look at some way to, you know, offset that. Um, looking at the possibility of, you know, looking, um, you know, maybe issuing more before or waiting and, and issuing later on. So we, we look at that at the time that we decide. You know, we we build up to the debt is, uh, to the actual debt issuance. It, you know, issuing debt is a long process. When, when we target a date for a debt issuance, then we work backwards like three to four months. And we start at that point and start working forward as to how we're going to do, what we're going to do. And so it's, 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 a, real, it's, a, it's a real process that we go through and, and we factor all that in. One of the concerns is, is we also want to measure uh, cost benefit. You know, we could say, well, let's do 25 years, but that may add, you know, X number of dollars in additional interest over the life of the project where we're only going to save like two or three bucks on the tax rate. You know, so you might pay taxes longer on that project or higher taxes in the long run on that project because you're going to pay more in interest, whereas you know, it, and the benefit was only to save two or three bucks um, in, in any given fiscal year. So we, we actually look at that when we issued that, you know, the impact. That's why a lot of our debt recently has been 15 years is because uh, we were able to you know, pay it off quickly, get a more favorable interest rate, and, and actually being able to put us in a position to to issue debt, level out our debt and issue debt. 
Excellent. Oh, thank you for that. I'm glad we're being flexible and fluid there. Okay, next up, uh, Joe and Peter, could you put your hands down? Joe, you're up next. <laughs> thank you very much. Joe, thank you very much for the numbers. To me, they look really good. So I just want to confirm with you. So we're not going to see. So if it goes to referendum passes, our residents won't see any impact until 22, 23. And basically we hit the peak, you said at 27, 28, and then it starts to go down, correct? The debt service peaks around 27, 28, and then it starts to go down, right? Okay, so we're basically looking at four to six years of climbing numbers and starts to decrease for every resident and then we can figure our budgets out as we go further. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Uh, Gary, any questions? No, no, not at this time, but that, Joe, thank you very much. The spreadsheets were very informative. Thank you. Good. Uh, Chris? Um, no questions. I think Ed, Ed and Brian and, and Joe kind of hit everything I was thinking about. I, I, I will take the opportunity just to, you know, maybe pile on with Joe and, and Kathy and, and based on my tenure on the Board of Education that, you know, to make sure the community knows that, you know, the, uh, nothing is being sacrificed in terms of the other projects at the other schools with the Fry Report. And this is all baked into these projections. So the community knows both from just the parents who are concerned about the projects at the other schools that that's not being sacrificed and that yet, you know, people who were concerned, you know, last time around about these other projects that may be going on, they are already in here. So I just want to make sure I'll pile on and make sure that message gets out. Thank you. Thanks for the clarification, Chris. Um, okay, Joe, I do have a couple of uh, questions on top of these. Uh, you had mentioned the capital improvements. We're assuming them being 3%. Uh, what is your assumption for the increase in the uh, Board of Ed and the town side? 3%. Okay, so 3% each year is how we see the numbers as we see them right here. Right. Um, okay, very good, thank you. And the, uh, the actual overall impact to that average homeowner, if my math is right, the increase due to the high school project is a total increase to the average homeowner over the life of this project each year, $465.16, is that correct? You got it. Okay. That's correct. Uh, all right, and uh, could you just repeat, you said it before, I didn't catch it quickly, uh, the, bo the bond issues, there were gonna be four bond issues and uh, what were those amounts? Um, right now, we, again, based on this forecast, there would be four bond issues. Each one would be in January, starting in 2022. First one would be uh, 20 million, second one would be 45 million, third one would be 25 million, and the fourth one would be 20 million. Great. Okay, and uh, just doing a quick check through here if I had any other questions. Um, no, I think, uh, I think that covers, I appreciate that. Um, uh, any other final questions for Joe? Great, okay, thank you very much, Joe, appreciate that.